Hi, this is Simon Opstall and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today I want to show you how to build a simple but flexible green screen keyer using just the custom tool. So let's get going. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using this green screen plate, which you can download from Hollywood Camera Work. And we'll be using this city background, which I'll give you a link to in the description. So there'll be a link to the Hollywood camera work as well. So first of all, we need to format them so they, they match each other. So I'm just going to quickly add a resize to the plate here. And because my composition settings are 1920, 1080, it's sorted her out. So my city is too big and we're just going to crop it. So again, just add a crop and that'll crop it down to 1920. I'm not worried about seeing too much of it. It's just a background. So let's come back to the plate. And the first thing we want to do is we want to create a mat. So we're going to be doing this whole thing with just three custom tools. We could probably do it even with fewer than that, but I want to show you how simple it can be, but also how flexible it can be once you've actually built it this way. So let's just drop in a custom tool after our resize here and let's take a look at it. So as I say, we're going to be creating our mat here. So if you read the textbooks, what you'll usually see is that to create the basic raw mat, you use the following expression, G1 minus max open brackets, R1 comma B1 close brackets. So let's just take a look at the red channel to see what that is. So that's, I've just typed that into the red field there so we can get a quick idea. We've got a basic raw mat that we can then scale so that the white goes white and the black goes black. But what we're going to do is do something a little bit more sophisticated than this, which will give us a bit more control. So let's just clear that. and Let's go back to R1 for that. Let's come back to the intermediate tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to waste too much time typing in this tutorial. So I'm actually going to be just pasting a lot of this stuff in. So I'm going to paste into intermediate one the following expression. So you'll probably see immediately that we've got a simple version of what we just did previously, which was the green channel minus the red channel. And I'll explain the rest of it in a second when I've pasted in the other expression into I2. So here, we're subtracting the blue from the green channel. So we've also got this clamp operation here. So you've got clamp open brackets, our expression, and then zero and then one. And what that does is it makes sure that the result of this expression gets clamped to the zero to one range and we don't get any out of range values. And that's very important. So if you're doing this in Resolve Fusion, in other words, the Fusion page of Resolve rather than Fusion Studio, which is what I'm using, the clamp function doesn't work, which is extremely annoying. But I will explain what you need to do at the end of this tutorial. So what about this bit here? So we're multiplying it by N1, which is obviously the number one control over here. And this one we're multiplying by the inverted value of N1. And then we can add those two expressions together. So I'm just going to paste an expression into I3. So what that's doing is we're adding I1 and I2 and we're inverting them. So when we adjust the number control, we're basically getting a mix between I1 and I2. And then one minus that result is inverting it. So the final step is that I want to be able to scale the result of that mat creation process. So into I4, I'm going to paste the following expression. So we're taking the result of I3 here, we're subtracting the N2 number control, which is going to be a black value control. And then we're dividing that result by the N3 slider, which is going to be our high value control, minus the N2 slider. I won't explain too much about how that works. This is just a basic compression operation and it works really rather nicely. So then we can just take I4 and we can plug it into the red, green and blue. So I4 for each of those channels like so. So initially we don't see anything and that's because of our number three value here. This is the high value and its default should be one. So I'm just going to quickly come over to the config and set up names for these numbers. So it's going to be more obvious for you what's going on. I'll be back in a second. So here we are, as I say, this 
control is our red blue mix, the, the mix between these two different mat extraction models. And then this is our low control and this is our high control. So what we can do is use the low control, as you can see, to solidify the blacks. And then we can use the high control to solidify the foreground whites. So I know what these numbers want to be and I'm just going to plug them in. So I want 0.8 for my red blue mix and for my low value, my black, I'm going to go with 0.3. And for my white, I'm going to go with 0.65. And now I hope you'll see we've got this really nice mat with some nice soft hair detail here. Let's zoom in a bit so you can see a bit better. Some pretty good hair detail. And we've been able to do that pretty simply. Now this red-blue mix is really useful. So if I set that to one, we're getting some lots of lovely edge detail here on the hair. But we're also seeing all these tracking marks. Conversely, if I set it to zero, so we're getting only the blue, you'll see the tracking marks disappear, but we're losing a lot of that edge detail. And also our foreground is starting to become transparent. So what we can do, as I showed you, is just to create a mix between those two and around 0.8 was giving us a pretty good result. I think you'll agree. So there we go. We've got our mat. Let's rename that. So now what we have to think about is our foreground plate, which obviously needs a lot of despill going on, because as you can see, there's a great deal of green, even in her face here. So we need to sort that out. So we're going to do that with another custom tool. So I'm going to just drop in another custom tool, and I'm going to take my resize output into this new custom tool. So let's just call this despill plate. So what we're going to do with this is something very similar to what we actually did with our main mat extraction routine. So we're going to come over to intermediate. In intermediate one, we're going to put in this, which is, as you can see, the exact same expression we used in our mat. And in I2, we're going to have this, which again is the exact same expression. So here, subtracting the red, subtracting the blue, and then this mix operation here. And then obviously we need to add the two of those together like that. So I1 plus I2 here. So the difference with this is that we're just going to use I3. Let's have a look at I3. If we come over to here, I'll just type that into the red field and then manage the red field. So that's what we've got. That's our I3 value. And so that basically what this is, is a map of all the places where the green is exceeding the result of our intermediate one and two expression there. So what we can do is use that and subtract that from the green channel. So G1 minus I3 is going to give us our despilled plate. Now it looks pretty strange at the defaults, so what we're going to do is actually come over to our number control and we're going to reset that to something like 0.6. And what we've done there is to make sure that the green is at no point exceeding the other two channels. And you can see we've taken all that green out of her coat here and we can adjust that balance if we want to get exactly the look that we want. I'm going to stick with something like 0.6 just to get us going. Right, so we've got our despill plate, we've got our mat, and now we can combine them to create a key. So to do that, we are going to add a, another custom tool. So there you go. So we're going to take our despill plate and we're going to add it to the image one input. We're going to take our background here, our cropped background, and we're going to add it to the image two input. And we're going to take our mat, this chap here, and we're going to add it to the image three input. So there we go. To start off with, all we can see is our foreground here because that's image one and that's what the custom tool defaults to. I'm just going to rename this as key so we know what that is. So to get our key, we are going to do the following and I'm going to go bit by bit here. So in this red field, I'm going to type open brackets C1 times R3 close brackets. R3, not R2. And I'm just going to quickly copy that into the other channels. So now what we've got is our despill plate multiplied by the mat, so that everything that was green is now black. So that's a good start. And 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply our background by the inverted plate. So actually, I'm just going to show you what that looks like very quickly. And I'll do that by typing the following expression, open brackets, C2 times open brackets, one minus R3, close brackets, close brackets. And I'm just going to copy that into the other two fields. So there you go. Now we've got our background multiplied by the inverted mat. So in order to get the key, all we have to do is add those two different operations together. So let's do that. I'm going to just copy and paste this rather than typing it. So there you go. Paste this same expression into all three fields. And we've got our key, as you can see, our despill plate our foreground and our background. So this is just a basic over operation. We're multiplying the foreground by the mat and we're multiplying the background by the inverted mat and then we're adding the two together. So there you go. We've very, very simply got our result. And because we've set this up in the way that we have, we've got some nice control over the look of the key, both in terms of the mat and in terms of the spill suppression. So I mentioned earlier that if you're doing this in Resolve Fusion, the clamp operation doesn't work. You can see perfectly well what the problem is here. Uh, something gone horribly wrong. And that's because if you look down at the numbers down here as I hover, the mat has got values that are well over one. And that is causing this horrible result here. And as I say, it's because the clamp operation doesn't work. This, this is not recognized by Resolve Fusion. It really should be. It's just a very, very basic bit of Lua. But anyway, so there's a very simple solution, which is after this mat to add a brightness contrast like this and to clip both the black and the white like so. And you can see that doing so sorts it out. Because if we look at the brightness contrast and you look at the numbers down here, you'll see that the white is one, has a value of one and the black has a value of zero and we don't have any nasty numbers. So always worth knowing that the brightness contrast gives you a very simple clip operation if you ever run into that sort of problem. So that's the end of this tutorial. There's way more that I could tell you about, but that, that's enough for now. The point to remember is that once you've created your mat like this, there's a whole host of other compositing operations you can do with it to refine the key. So anyway, I hope that's been useful. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I'll see you again soon.